Despite their similarities, open fistfights had frequently broken out during the Americans' occupation of England during Hitler's war, and while it wasn't so much a cultural gap of mere manners between the old country and the new world, the Americans had a unique feeling for the spirit of freedom that no European could hope to share. The German army had marched into Russia in 1941 after two years of bad crops, and if international Jews had started the war and were keeping it going from outside Germany, then if the Jews were done away with, the war would end. With the end of the war, America and Germany and England could be friends, and so Jews were sent for resettlement and for special treatment and the movies made by the Germans showing piles of shoes and clothes and hair and teeth and eyeglasses had been made by the Nazis to show the German public that their efforts had not been wasted. The Germans considered that the movies of all the dead bodies in the camps were concocted as phony propaganda, pictures from a few isolated camps that had met with disaster, and that the Americans were not morally superior because of Hiroshima. Eichmann had wanted to help the condemned Jews by making their journey less difficult, believing they'd be helped if they knew there was no escape and that there was no chance of putting up a struggle or imagining a way out of it, and if the death machine ran smoothly, the cooperation of the victims would make it easier on them as they gave themselves up to their fate, because by this time most everyone already knew that they were not welcome anywhere and that nobody would come to their aid. Eichmann wanted to spare them the confusion of disorganization during their journey to the camp, so he brought order to the process, while in Romania the Germans had to insert themselves between the local people who had managed to get rid of one-third of their Jews without any outside help. The Romanian government wanted to stop the shipment of their Jews to Germany because too much money was being made selling escapes to Palestine, but Germany needed the Romanian Jews for labor so an intervention had been made, and Romania would become Romania after the war so they would sound more Western. The first Jews driven out of Germany had been forced out because of their politics, not their race or religion, and Jews were accused of not being German, and if they left Germany that would prove it, so they stayed and stayed in hopes their fellow Germans would come to their senses. Many believed Jewish, quote, homelessness had been the cause of the Holocaust, and that a Jewish state was needed in response, and while Jerusalem had been destroyed seventeen times, it was now time for peace. So on the 14th of May, in 1948, Israel became a state, and opium was grown directly to the north, the south, and the east of Israel, and to the west was the deep blue sea. As soon as Stalin died in 1955, the British were kicked out of Egypt, and the Moslems were able to attack the new state of Israel, now that Stalin's iron fist was no longer around to keep them in line. And as soon as Stalin lay silent in the grave, Churchill announced that the Royal Navy had a hydrogen bomb, not just an atomic bomb, but a plutonium bomb, and they also had submarines from which to launch them. Hitler's non-aggression pact with Stalin in 1939 had allowed Russia to sell oil to Germany, and Romania had the most significant oil fields in Europe and had suffered mightily during the Great War, hoping to stay neutral while the British destroyed the Romanian oil wells to keep them out of Germany's hands. Romania was given a serious beating, and the Germans repaired the Romanian oil f facilities before the Great War was over, and in June of 1940, Stalin went into Romania because the non-aggression pact made with Hitler had given Romania to Stalin. Hitler had planned to stay friends with Russia so he could buy all the oil Germany needed from Stalin, and the non-aggression pact split Poland between Germany and Russia, and both sides thought it had been agreed upon in London with the Chamberlain deal. The division of Poland had gone rather smoothly with the nationalist Poles retreating into Romania to wait for help from the British, which never came. 
The Germans and the Russians greeted each other as friends when they met in the middle of Poland, and they took plenty of photographs of their armies fraternizing and working together, and the nationalist Poles went off to France and to England to become Dominion troops. Romania was a stunningly beautiful country full of fairy tale castles, just a little smaller than the state of Colorado and the non-aggression pact went awry when Romania and Russia had a falling out over the Jewish question. Romania invited the Germans to protect them from Russia in November of 1940, and by December, Hitler started planning Barbarossa, not only to retain the Romanian oil fields, but to protect Baku as well, now that it had become clear that Stalin was more interested in protecting Jews than in selling oil. Because the Romanians lost so much in overturning the agreement with Stalin, they went to great lengths to persecute Jews to prove that the Soviets had it all wrong about the menace they posed, becoming a tragic chapter in Romanian history, having been burned too closely by the scourge of Islam on their southern border, and Romania would become one of the Russian Soviets for their pains. To beat Russia, in Operation Barbarossa, Hitler had to make it a surprise attack or the Russians would have time to set up defenses, and a loyal German communist went to Stalin and warned him about Barbarossa, but Stalin had him shot because it seemed like a trick. When I worked in Baku, there were rumors rampant that during the occupation of Baku by English troops, Beria worked for the counterintelligence service of the Musavat government. Since the Musafat Counterintelligence Service was under the control of English, it was said that Beria must be an English intelligence agent operating through the Musafat, Musafatists. Khrushchev remembers, page 100. Stalin took a quarter million prisoners out of Poland by railroad to Smolensk. In September of 1939, all those unwilling to surrender to the new Soviet regime and he offered to send them to Hitler, but instead Hitler sent ex execution squads to the Katyn Forest in April and May of 1940 to show Stalin how it was done, and the Germans and Russians lined up anyone who could speak English and shot them dead, whether or not they had a good excuse. Stalin had been using Polish prisoners as construction workers when the Germans showed up at Smolensk and murdered 12,000 of the Poles being held prisoner, and they were killed mostly by German guns along with a few Russian pistols that were found when the site was excavated, and the Germans dug up the dead Poles after Barbarossa to point an accusatory finger at Stalin, hoping to prove to the world that Russians were barbarians and that everyone should support the Nazis. As soon as the Russians won at Stalingrad in February of 1943, the Red Cross opened an inquiry the following month of April to investigate the Katyn massacre, and Stalin accused the Allies of collaborating with German propaganda, and he wanted to know why Russia was the only one doing any serious fighting against Hitler. Stalin had been asking why Hitler hadn't managed to conquer Britain in 1940, and then Hitler betrayed him with Barbarossa, and to get the Romanian and Russian oil fields during Barbarossa, three million German soldiers drove more than a half a million oil-burning vehicles, along with a half million horses, into Russia on the 22nd of June in 1941, and the German troops didn't reach Moscow until the fall of 1941, and then they bogged down in the mud and the snow on their way to Baku. Because the Japanese had gone after Southeast Asia instead of Vladivostok on the Pacific, Stalin had been able to bring his eastern troops over to fight Hitler, and so the German attack on Russia had failed. Yet if Germany had conquered Russia and negotiated a peace with Britain, the Polish and Romanian and Baku oil fields would have been shared by Britain and Germany, and together they could have stopped Russian and American oil from interfering in the market. But the Japanese had not attacked Russia in order to concentrate on beating the Americans in the Pacific theater. Armies ran on rubber and motor parts and gasoline.
and when German trucks broke down, they needed spare parts that could not be delivered over the few roads fit for motor vehicles in Russia, and the German tanks and trucks burned more gasoline getting over roads made of Russian mud than the Germans had allocated. Germany needed to reach Baku, but the Americans had been supplying Stalin with enough supplies to beat back the Germans, and Russia was able to win at Stalingrad in January of 1943. In January of 1942, a squad of British commandos had gone into the Dutch East Indies and blown up Dutch Shell's oil wells and their related facilities, and the commandos warned the Dutch workers to flee for their lives the day before the Japanese arrived to occupy the island that had, been ab that had just been abandoned by the meager British military presence. Some of the Dutch oil workers were evacuated by seaplane to Surabaya, but 40 of them died hiding in the jungle from the Japanese, while another 35 were captured and caged, and the Americans cut the Japanese oil supply routes, and Japan suffered a gasoline shortage, so their use of suicide attacks saved fuel because each suicide required only half the gasoline to complete its mission. Stalin attacked the Germans at the Romanian Ploesti oil fields in the summer of 1942 after the Allies had bombed it in June and bombed it again the following year, and hundreds of downed pilots were rescued in Yugoslavia and sheltered by the nationalist Chetnik Draza Mikhailovich. Bombing the Ploesti oil fields had done some damage, but the facility had such an enormous output that only half of the installation was even being used, so the Germans simply put the other half to work, and eight million Russian soldiers would die that year in 1942. Russian trucks ran on diesel, while German trucks ran on gasoline, so captured Russian troop transports were of no help to Hitler. And when Field Marshal von Manstein called Hitler for help at Stalingrad, there was no help coming. And while there were plenty of supplies and aircraft available, there was not enough gasoline to get it to Stalingrad. And by the time Hitler gave the order to retreat, German troops no longer had enough fuel to even get through the Russian lines. And so the German army surrendered. At the height of the summer of 1942, German mountaineering soldiers had run the swastika flag up a pole planted on the highest peak in the Caucasus Mountains near Chechnya that was only a few hundred miles from Baku, and Germany captured one small Caucasian oil field by the end of the summer, but the pump houses had been so completely damaged that less than 100 barrels per day could be produced, and when they finally repaired the wells, it would be too late to make much of a difference. The new German radio phones had worked to perfection in Russia, and Hitler knew he could get all the gasoline he needed for the war from Romania. Where the Danube River ran from its outlet on the Black Sea in Romania, all the way to Vienna for carrying tanker barge traffic, and when Hitler needed to withdraw from North Africa to bolster his drive towards Baku, Rommel disobeyed Hitler because he was fighting the war on his own, and the Americans had gotten in the way of the British in Iran, and after Stalingrad was won by the Russians in January of 1943, the tide of the, ter the, tide of the war turned against both the Germans and the British. Rommel had his gasoline rationed until the fall of 1941, and well into early 1942, when supplies had mysteriously reappeared, and Rommel had pushed on into Africa until he was a Sunday's drive away from the Suez Canal. Mussolini had been deeply disappointed when Rommel was sent back to France because Mussolini had put a white horse on a plane so he could ride victorious through the streets of Cairo while Rommel marched on towards the Holy Land and then continued on to the oil fields of Iraq and Saudi Arabia. However, 
Rommel's supply line in Africa had been so long that his trucks were consuming more gas than they could carry, and the British had been sinking all the ships coming through the Mediterranean that were bringing fuel to Rommel, but still Rommel insisted that he could beat the British in North Africa, despite Hitler's orders to the contrary. Rommel was running short of gasoline again by the summer of 1942, and the Luftwaffe was failing to protect him and the German army had become suspicious and demoralized by the lack of Luftwaffe support, and the German soldier thought that surrendering to the Americans would be the better bet. Monty had been leaving fuel dumps cached in the desert sands paid for with his American lend funds that he had no intention of ever paying back, and then came the Kasserine Pass business, and by May of 1943 all of Rommel's African Corps had surrendered. In 1940, only 5% of the world's oil had come from the Persian Gulf, and over 60% came from America, and that year, selected oil wells in Arabia had been filled with cement under the supervision of American and British companies, and that year in 1940, a drought and crop failure cut back the Moslem pilgrimage to Arabia, so the Saudi king was strapped for cash that he usually collected from Islamic tourism. But America would not give him lend money because Saudi Arabia was not a democracy as required by U.S. law for lend while the British had minted two million dollars worth of Arab coins for use in Arabia and had given it to some royal Arab families. Ingenious economic dodges of the treasury plus judicious purchases under enemy noses in neutral markets and the daily tightening of the stranglehold blockade were rapidly putting Germany in the same spot in which she found herself in 1916 after only seven months of war this time. Indeed, it was all wise, cagey, methodical. The first week of the war they formed the United Kingdom Oil Pool, assembling all British oil companies under one government department. Good idea so far, but then they began to organize the department. The English have no gift for organization. Committees were named to organize the committee that ran the pool. Subcommittees were appointed to organize the organizing committees, and steering committees were appointed over them. Result? In March, in the Mediterranean, one oil tanker often received from London three sets of orders to report to three different ports for three different types of cargo. Europe in the Spring by Claire Booth Luce, New York, Alfred A. Knopf, 1941, first published September 16, 1940, page 142. The U.S. had kept a careful eye on Arabian countries after the Great War, when the British had made their peace with the Kaiser, and FDR knew that Arabian oil would determine who won Hitler's war, and he reminded all the Arabians that the money the British were spending had actually come from American lend -lease. FDR knew that American tankers would soon be busy supplying ships in the Pacific fighting the Japanese, and he needed to stay on the best of terms with the Saudis. And FDR signed lend -lease with the Saudis on the 18th of February in 1943, bending the rules of the Monroe Doctrine due to the presence of the British military in Arabia and because Germany was in occupation of the Romanian oil fields. Then came the destruction of the troop ship Rona in the Mediterranean, and the Rona was hit on the 26th of November in 1943 by a radio-guided, rocket-boosted glide bomb, killing over 1,000 American troops on board, and it was reported that the ship had been hit with a torpedo from a submarine because the glide bombs were simply too terrifying for their existence to become known. Two days after the sinking of the Rona, FDR opened the Tehran conference in Iran because Stalin felt comfortable in Tehran, and FDR gave Churchill a really bad time for the duration. Stalin visited the Shah at Tehran, but FDR made the Shah come to him, and FDR told the Shah he would help him plant trees to bring forests back to Iran. 
Iran used to have large forests. Eleventh-century travelers wrote about them. But the forest's private owners cut them down, mostly for charcoal to be used in cooking and heating and smoking opium in a hookah. Fall of the Peacock Throne, the story of Iran, by William H. Forbes, New York, Harper and Row, 1980, page 73. When FDR called Stalin and Churchill to the Yalta Conference in the Crimea on the 13th and 14th of February in 1945, the Chinese Chang had not been invited, and the question of Poland dominated the negotiations. FDR told Churchill that the only way to stop the Russians from taking over the whole of Poland was if Germany surrendered unconditionally which had not been forthcoming because Hitler was putting his hopes on the British plan for a separate peace, which Himmler also had been trying to achieve, but the Americans were having none of it. From the 16th of December in 1944, Stalin had been waiting on the other side of the Vistula, Vistula to see how the bulge would come out and he had held his soldiers back in case the bulge was successful and the British and the Germans joined together to occupy Hitler's half of Poland. On the 12th of January, when Stalin started his offensive towards Berlin, he would move 200 miles in 11 days, and Hitler responded by sending Sepp-Dietrich's Sepp Dietrich's 6th Panzer Army to Budapest, to protect the Hungarian oil fields in Operation Spring Awakening. Regardless of the prospective destiny of the 6th Panzer Army, the regular soldier on the Western Front regarded its withdrawal as preferential treatment for the SS. Manteuffel reported that his situation was not so serious where the troops were busy, but in the rest areas the hopelessness of the entire operation was now obvious. The Bitter Woods, page 425. The British wanted to give Poland back to a Polish government in exile, waiting in London, and the Romanians had arrested the real Polish government that had fled to safety in northern Romania in September of 1939, where they had waited in vain for the French and British army. But FDR wanted Stalin to know that America would oppose the British being let back into Poland, and at Yalta, FDR was quite rude to Churchill about it. On his way back from the Yalta conference, FDR met with King Saud, Saud on board a ship in the Suez Canal, and they met on Valentine's Day, and FDR and King Saud became fast friends because both were the same age and both had infirm legs, and FDR gave King Saud his spare wheelchair even though the king was too big to sit in it. King Saud wanted two things. First, that the British be kept out of Arabia, and second, that the displaced Jews be given a homeland in Germany. Three days later, Churchill rushed down to talk with King Saud, but refused to refrain from drinking alcohol in the king's presence, and Churchill smoked cigars constantly in front of him, and while FDR was a chain smoker himself, the American president had refrained from smoking in the presence of the Saudi king. FDR would die without putting his pact with King Saud into writing, yet Congress continued to refuse to do oil business with the British, not so much to comply with FDR's promises to King Saud, but because America could not enter into any state petroleum arrangement, as America was bound to the principle of fair competition in a free private market as far as Arabian oil was concerned. The Russians had once owned most of the Pacific Northwest in America, all the way down to the Presidio in San Francisco, and after the first United Nations conference opened in April of 1945 in San Francisco, the first complaint, complaint to the UN came from Iran in January of 1946, who claimed that the Russians were still in Iran's northern region. Quote, which had been occupied in wartime for the purpose of ensuring the supply line from the Persian Gulf, close quote, 20th Century Russia by Donald W. Treadgold, Chicago, Rand McNally and Company, 1959-1968, page 414. 
The British were shipping oil from Iran through the Suez Canal because Iran was right next door to India, where the British military were comfortably entrenched. And Russia had kept their presence in northern Iran ever since the British had used it as a staging area from which to attack Russia during the war with the Whites. The UN sided with Iran, but granted Russia their request that Israel be allowed to found a state of their own, and without Russia's vote there would have been no state of Israel. The second complaint to the United Nations was that most Greeks had failed to vote in the 1946 election in Greece because they wanted Russia to help squash the Islamists, continuing to torment them, and the new American president declared the Truman Doctrine in April of 1947, saying that America would come to the aid of free countries threatened by, quote, armed minorities or by outside pressures, close quote, while the Russians wanted to stay in Iran to help the Shah with his Islamic terrorism problem. All foreign forces were supposed to leave Iran within six months of the end of Hitler's war, but the British complained they should be allowed to stay in Iran if the Russians were still in the north. So to get the British out of Iran, Truman told Stalin to leave Iran or the American army would come land in the Persian Gulf, and the Russians withdrew from Iran, but the British stayed. There was a huge demand for gasoline after Hitler's war, and more oil was discovered with new drilling technology, but demand continued to be greater than supply, and King Saud refused to allow anyone but Americans to pump Saudi oil. After SoCal had struck oil in Bahrain in May of 1932, the Saudis had given Southern California a concession to drill, and that was handled by a subsidiary of SoCal called California Arabian Standard Oil. Cassock. And Texas Oil bought half of that in 1936, and they hit oil in 1938. On the 31st of January in 1944, the name of the company was changed to Arabian American Oil Company, or Aramco, and FDR went to visit King Saud two weeks later, and on the 28th of September in 1945, Truman put a U.S. base at Dahrain in Saudi Arabia to protect the Saudis from the British, and when Standard New York and Standard New Jersey joined with Aramco in December of 1946, they argued that antitrust did not apply to foreign ventures and signed an agreement with the Saudis in March of 1947, making the money available that was needed by Aramco to produce Arabian oil, and America did its best to keep King Saud happy. The day the Aramco deal was signed, President Truman announced his Truman Doctrine pledging money to help Greece and Turkey, and a pipeline to the Mediterranean was started to keep oil coming to America in case the British managed to shut down the Suez Canal, stopping the Arabian tankers from bringing oil to America out of the Persian Gulf, and the British stirred up the Greeks by telling them the Russians were coming. <laughs>